Let's bring you through the newspapers on this Monday morning. Uh, doing that, we've got Chris Akabusi and Claire Pearsall. Uh, and Claire, we want to start with the, the BBC presenter scandal. Uh, the Sun uh, owning this story and uh, leading today all over the front page. Suspended BBC man's panic calls to youngster is the headline. It, this whole story, it does beg the question as why it, did this not go to the police earlier? When you look down at the timeline of events, it was back in May that it was brought to the attention yeah. of the BBC. Mm. Now, why the BBC didn't feel that it needed to involve the police at that point needs some explaining. And there is a lot of explaining, I think, that needs to, to go on. Why is it taken from May till the beginning or pretty much, pretty much the second week of July for the police to be involved and the suspension of the presenter themselves. That's only happened across the weekend due to the fact that The Sun had put out a story. Yeah. I think it does, and I, I have always said that we shouldn't name that person until such times as there is proper evidence, but I, I do wonder now if we are moving, and my opinion is that we are moving that he has to be named I would say probably by the end of the day. I think that it is now moving quicker. There is more evidence coming out there. And The Sun would not have printed a story on two consecutive days if their legal team didn't think it was robust yeah. enough. And given that they are the ones who have spoken with the family and have that relationship, their legal team would have been all over this. So I think the BBC are going to probably buy the next 24 hours and name that person. That being said, they have a duty of care, presumably to their yeah. employee, who has been with them for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and safeguarding has to be a factor in all of this. It didn't happen on BBC premises or BBC time, as far as we're aware. Even though he is the face of it, mm. there is a big question on debate around the right to privacy yeah, versus well, the that... public interest. And I suppose people pay the licence fee, don't they? They have an expectation of certain standards, so there is an entitlement there on the public's behalf. 100%. And, and look, look I, mean, I mean, when you talk about going to the police, my challenge is why mum who has gone to, I'm assuming the son, I'm assuming she's talking to the son, um, didn't find it uh, appropriate to talk to the police in May. Because I'm a father, uh, uh, four children, and if anything like this happened to my children, I would immediately involved the uh, the police. But yes, there is a duty of care um, with the the, the, the presenter. Uh, I, I don't know what his family are, go are going through right now. It, that's where my mind is. I mean, obviously, the young the young boy. Uh, yeah, I think he yeah, knows the young boy. Yeah. The young the young boy has got his phone looking after him, but. The, 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 the children, I mean, if, if I'd got myself into trouble, I think about my children and how they must be feeling when they, when they go to school or my elder children, they're, 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 you know, they're in their 30s, when they go to work colleagues and they've got the name, mm. Akabusi. You know. mm. It's interesting the point you make about the mother. A few emails actually sharing your views on that, Chris. PK said, is anyone asking the question why this mother waited three years before raising this issue? Has the money stopped being paid to her now grown-up? so-called child. Chris says, why did the 17-year-old's mother... I don't think mother... she knew about it initially. Right, yeah. that's, mm. that's a legitimate response then. Why did the 17-year-old's mother go to his employer and the newspaper about these allegations in the first place? Wouldn't the police be the first place you would go? So there are questions, I think, about that as well and what, yeah. the, what the BBC actually did know. One of the points we wanted to bring up, though, was the fact that, um, that in, in one of the other papers it's talked about, you know, p p other BBC male presenters who have been named and shamed as the possible person in question, and have, they've felt the need to have to come up and defend themselves. And, in fact, on social media, they're now saying, if you don't defend yourself, it must be you. Mm. You know, now, I'm not privileged in, in a position to, to be a male presenter on, on the BBC, but the idea that I'd have to defend myself, you know, it's like saying, when did you stop beating your wife? The moment you start defending yourself about be beating your <laughs> wife and doing things, like, you're, you're guilty by association. And that sort of mud sticks. And with the BBC, I do understand why they've taken the time and gone through all the protocols and processes, because, as I mentioned, Sir so Cliff Richard got named and shamed, and he was innocent. Mm. Yeah. So these are serious allegations, and they but, um, do need to... I do think that this is the problem with 
social media as well. Everything is now so instant and you've got the, the classic quote that a lie is halfway around the world before the truth has got its boots on. Yeah. And that is sped up even more so in, in social media land. So the speculation is so rife out there. People are feeling they need to defend themselves. There are defamation cases going to be brought against people for not removing it. And well, I think we are yeah. in a really difficult position with social media where people don't understand what it is they can and cannot say in cases like this. We have to be very and, careful. And what makes people feel that their, their instinct, you know, they talk about people they don't know, or oh, will it have been him? Him, yeah. definitely him. But I think it's very easy to say that when you're a faceless person mm -hmm. right. on the computer. You mm -hmm. wouldn't go up to somebody necessarily in the street and say, well, the majority of people wouldn't but do the, that. But the tragedy in, in all of this, Claire, I think, not, not in relation to the actual offence, but in, in relation to the online safety issue, mm -hmm. is actually all that will come out of this is a bunch of lawyers making a lot of money on, yeah. in defamation cases. Actually, I don't think the social media platforms will change. I think, you know, the genie's always out of the bottle. when it, They cannot police that. They, they, they well, so, uh, again, I saw... This, uh, pardon me, sorry, Claire. I saw somebody who had named somebody inappropriately and the, 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 the presenter threatened him and in the tweet he said, ''Oh, yeah, really? Where are you going to send it? Do you know where I live? Ha, ha, ha.'' So, actually, people... These, these um, eco... People warriors. People yeah. warriors, they're quite bold right. in their... Uh, yeah. So, let's, let's try and squeeze uh, two stories in the three minutes that's left. Um, Claire, this is the mail. Civil servants can't work from the beach after demanding the right to carry out their jobs overseas. Now, I'm a, a staunch defender of uh, working from home. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's brought a, a great deal of ease to my life and also a great deal of productivity that I don't have in the office. But I think this one pushes it too far. To carry out their jobs from overseas, even on their sun loungers, I think, no. Working from home is one thing. Working from abroad because you want to go visit your family and friends or... Have a holiday. Have a holiday and you think you can log in. I'm not convinced that this is going to be the best use of taxpayers' money, which is what it is, but also how are you going to ensure that person's work is up to scratch if they're Surely suddenly sending it clear. across? I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think if someone goes on a two-week family holiday and they want to stay for an extra week but just be with the family in the evening in the lovely sunshine for meals or whatever, but working throughout the day, I don't see why that's an issue. I think we have to be able to trust people to be responsible and do their job, and if not, you sack them. We just, the, we, the we, we just, we, we just, 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 we and if, if they're able to work from home, then what's the difference if they're...? But I think that highlights the problem with the civil service, is that you can't say that somebody isn't performing and just get rid of them. It doesn't work like yeah. that. We all know those difficulties. And there are so many government departments that are not functioning as they should. Mm. So it's not necessarily working from home that's causing it, but I think by adding sunshine and uh, a glass of something Shangri -La. alongside of it, <laughs> I think uh, on taxpayers' money, and they are going to be the ones talking <sighs> out for the laptops, the okay. connectivity and everything else. Well, not a good thing. Talking about uh, the uh, something sparkling or whatever, um, Chris, yeah. Wimbledon, um, should you be able to hear the sound of champagne corks popping there or not? And if so, when? Should well, I, I, I'd love to story the idea that put, uh, it, put a cork in it is the headline in the sun and it's about champagne bubbles going off in the middle of the games and um, there was a particular match in which someone was just about to serve and boop! <laughs> they had to, and, the, and, the, and the umpire said, oi, be careful, basically, that's like a But I just laughed because... It, golf and tennis, they have got these rules about making noises, but now, the, the, have you heard of the live tour, the golf live tour, and they've got boom boxes and ghetto blasters. I played in a, in a pro celebrity game up at the Bedford, up at um, the Belfry, and there was music blasting and people were dancing around the greens while you were putting. And I want you to juxtapose this with track and athletics, as you've already seen. I've got my Olympic <laughs> blazer on from 84. And actually, noise is a good thing. When you come from the, the from the training environment where it's really, really quiet, and you come into the arena and you've got this cacophony of sound, and you, the, you, you fall into the atmosphere and it raises you up and the adrenaline glands are really flowing because you know you're in this peculiar environment. And actually, silence itself 
also has a particular sound, a phenomenal sound, where you go from this roar of anticipation to the silence of, oh, your marks. Oh, great. <laughs> the well, sound <laughs> of silence. There we go. I uh, silence. Nothing that I would ever put in the same sentence as you, Chris, <laughs> but anyway. Thank you very much, my friend. Have a Bye. good rest of the day. And thank you, Claire. Really appreciate it. Uh, Chris Akabusi and Claire Pearsall uh, there.